Hello everyone and welcome to Fun with Fitzy. Today we're going to be looking at how accountants use balance sheets and compare. This is section 8.3 in your textbook. As you remember, we have a worksheet that we started using on the last video on income statements, so you will need to pull that out as well to fill in the information from that. Okay, remember at the very beginning of the course we had an account form balance sheet where we had the assets on the left hand side and the liabilities and owner's equity on the right hand side. That was called the account form. Now, we are using the report form and we switched to this once we expanded the owner's equity section and added the revenue expense and drawings accounts. And this was the assets on top and the liabilities and owner's equity underneath. Now we're going to expand it one more time and we're going to call it the classified balance sheet. Very similar to this most recent balance sheet. However, now you'll notice there's different classifications. Okay, let's start with the top. Who, what, when stays the same. And now we have something called current assets. Current assets are assets that will be converted into cash within the first year or within this current year. Fixed assets, on the other hand, are those assets that are long-term assets that we use in the business for helping to produce our goods or service. For example, land, building equipment, we don't use those up. And then of course we have current liabilities, which are um, short-term debts, which we expect to pay within one year of this balance sheet date. And then we have long-term liabilities, don't call them fixed liabilities, they're long-term liabilities, and these are debts that the business has that are not due within this year. Then we have capital. This whole section remains the same. Remember, beginning capital goes in the middle, plus net income, minus drawings, and equals an increase in capital, which goes here. And then you add your increase in capital to your beginning capital to get your ending capital. This is not new. So basically, all we're doing is splitting our accounts into current and fixed and we add them up, put the total here. Add up our fixed, put the total there. And then when you add up our current assets and your fixed assets, you get our total assets right here. And again, with our liabilities and owners equity, this is not new because we looked at this in the last chapter uh, where we have list our liabilities here, just like we're listing our assets in this middle column. But when we have that additional math to do here with our HST, not GST. So we'll call this notes payable, just a different kind of liability. But anyways, we have HST payable minus HST recoverable, and you're going to put the answer right here. And in this case, because payable is larger than recoverable, again, we have a remittance. The end. Make sure your total assets equal your total liabilities and owner's equity. And again, we're going to add up our current liabilities plus our long-term liabilities plus our ending capital will give us our total liabilities and owner's equity. Okay, moving right along here, uh, we do some similar comparisons with our balance sheet as we did with our income statement. So this is just going to be a little bit of review. Um, balance sheets provide useful tools for comparison. For example, current assets and current liabilities. These match up well because the time frame for both is one year. The difference between current assets, now when we say difference, remember we mean subtract. When you subtract your current liabilities from your current assets, we call this working capital. Sometimes you will ask, how much working capital does the company have? And it's an indication of a company's ability to meet these short-term, or sometimes we call them current obligations. So if you have enough cash to pay off your current debts, then you have a good working capital. Okay, another example on the classified balance sheet that we can compare are our fixed assets to our long-term liabilities because both of these have a greater time period than one year. And a comparison of these totals provides insight into the financing of fixed assets. Okay, so where do we get the building and land from? Probably the mortgage and things you see. Okay, now let's look at this as a 
a classified balance sheet because you can see the classifications, current assets, fixed assets, and whatnot. But we're going to do from year to year for the same company. Similar to the comparative income statement, we're comparing 2001 to 2002. So in 2001, we had 5711 in cash, and in 2002, it went up to 9000 So that's an increase of $3,000 which is a percent change of 62%. Remember, it's 559 divided by year one will give you this percent change. And we can do that for the whole balance sheet. Okay, trend analysis is the same on the balance sheet as we were looking at for the income statement as well. So we would compare years, 1998 to 1999 and so on. And, um, Let's say that this is working capital as an example. So we're looking at the current assets minus current liabilities in this example. In 1998, were 19,626. In the next year, it was 18,993, which was lower. So this was a decrease. So in year two here, 1999, we had 96.8% of the working capital we had in 1998, and so on. In 2000, it went up to 20,000, which compared to year one, if you divide that by that, you're going to get 104.9%. And here is an example of what we did, the 16,761 divided by the 19,626 times 100 will give 85%. Again, it's lower. We only had 85% of the working capital in 2001 than we had in 1998. So again, that's the trend analysis. And finally, let's look at the common size balance sheet. On the common size income statement, we compared everything to that revenue number, which was our base number. On a common size balance sheet, our base number is going to be our total assets. We're going to compare everything to our total assets. So, for example, bank is 3% of our total assets. How do we calculate that? 9270 divided by 278820 times by 100. Okay, or, as the example here that they gave us, total current assets are 27% of our total assets. Okay, here's a little hint for you. The percent change of total current assets plus the percent change of total fixed assets should equal 100%. Because, of course, they're all of our assets. Same for the total change of liabilities and owner's equity. We should make sure that... Uh, you add them up, they'll equal 100% as well. Okay, so for now, you should be able to understand what a classified balance sheet is and the different classifications and be able to prepare one. And you should be able to compare balance sheets from year to year for the same company and a trend analysis for the same company as well as compare two different companies using common size balance sheets.